Hey, what's up everybody, I'm Tommy, and today I'm gonna to show you how I made this zero clearance table saw insert that will accommodate your riving knife, but won't flex. Whether it's your first time here, or even if you've been here before, welcome to One Minute Workbench. So I have a DeWalt DW745 table saw, and the original throat plate has what I consider to be a pretty serious design flaw. And so in this video, I'm just gonna show you how I went about fixing that. So the main problem with the design of the original throat plate is that it flexes near the end. Because of that, smaller pieces you try to cut will catch on the cutout and that prevents you from being able to finish the cut. Even the back side of the throat plate is not perfectly flush with the table. And here you can see that when using my push stick on a narrow piece, it gets caught. If the saw were running, this would prevent me from being able to finish this cut. Part of the problem is that there are not enough of these tabs. There should be at least one more near where the pieces exit but there's not enough room because if there were one there, it would prevent the saw from being able to swing into position for making angled cuts. For the new insert, I started with a piece of white oak. I jointed a face and an edge and then moved on to the planer. At the planer, I planed it until it was just a little bit thicker than it would ultimately need to be. I did this because the depth of the support varies and I needed the extra material to be able to make fine adjustments. I measured the width of the insert slot and cut the board to match. I used the original insert to trace the curved ends and then cut the board to length. I carefully aligned the piece and then cut the blade slot. I wasn't ready to make the full cut, so I only went about 80% of the way. I used my bandsaw to trim the curved ends and then moved over to the disc sander to clean up the curves. The insert was a bit too snug, so I just kind of went back and forth between the table saw and the disc sander until I got it right. Then when I finally got it to fit, I drilled a hole so I could get it out. At this point, the insert was still slightly thicker than it needed to be. Again, this is so I can fine tune the bottom of the insert since the support tabs are all at different depths. I marked the locations of the support tabs and then began removing small amounts from the bottom side of the plate at those locations until the top side of the plate was perfectly flush with the table. I used a small wooden block with sharp edges so that I could easily detect even the smallest amount of unevenness. Once it was perfectly flush with the top, I gave it a light sanding with 220 grit sandpaper just to ease the sharp edges. I finished cutting the blade slot and then applied a generous coat of paste wax. At this point, the insert was perfectly flush with the table, but it still suffered from the same flex as the original. Since there was no room to add another support, I instead started working on a way to connect the two halves of the insert. I made a cut about 1 16th of an inch deep around the curved end of the insert. I 
I then used a chisel to make divots in that end to make chopping away material a little bit easier. Then I chopped away the material up to the point where I had made the cut. This created a small thin notch around the end. I cut a small piece of steel strap from a hose clamp and checked to see how it would fit. At first, it was a little too shallow, so I chopped away some more. After the strap was fitting good, I drilled a clearance hole and a countersink in the strap. I used the strap as a guide for drilling a pilot hole in the wood that would accept the screw, and then I secured the strap in place. For the next screw, I just worked on the strap while it was attached to the insert. I drilled a clearance hole in the strap, a pilot hole in the wood, a countersink hole in the strap, and then drove the second screw. The strap butts up against the notch, which eliminates the need for more screws. This makes the insert much more rigid and very resistant to flexing. For safety, I rounded over the sharp corners with a flat file. I tested to make sure it was still flush after adding the strap. It was still perfectly flush, so I checked to see that the flex was indeed removed and then made some test cuts. And it performed like a champ. Hey, thanks for watching. I really hope you liked this video. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe and make sure you hit the bell icon. That way you get notified every time I put out a new episode. I'd love to hear what you think about this zero clearance insert in the comments section below. And if you have any quick questions you want answered, hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And until the next time I see you, I hope you have fun building something.